welcome to the VitaCast episode 9. We're recording on December 17th, 2013. I'm your host, Tyler Oltoff, and I got the usual people with me, Kyle Wakeling. Hey guys, how's it going? I got the robot B. Ryan Sharon with me. Hey, what's up everybody? And Jasper. How's it going, Jasper? Hey everybody. Yeah, I'm good. I just uh, finished a paper, so I'm happy. Nice. <laughs> All right, so let's get let's get going to some stuff that I've been playing because I've played a few things and been having some fun with a few of the games I've played. Some of them not so much fun. Uh, Soul Sacrifice, I always like Soul Sacrifice. I played that with Kyle and some other guys in the lounge play that we did uh, Saturday, and also played Killzone, and that was with the lounge play as well. And I played some more Little Big Planet. That was also with the lounge play, but I also did play a little bit by myself because I got distracted. And started making levels, and time just went by as I did random crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, I played Sorcery Saga, which is that RPG game that's all about curry. Really weird, but I'm actually enjoying it. Uh, I also played some Doki Doki Universe, and I don't know how I feel about that. It's I really enjoyed the beginning, and then I kind of just like didn't care anymore, and... I don't know if has any have any of you guys played that yet? I have the review copy, but I haven't got around to it just yet. Um, are, have you been playing the full version or the free version? Well, I should have played the demo, but I just went out and bought it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I I don't know. I I need to get some more time in it. I've been really distracted with other games, so I I'm not gonna pass judgment yet. But eventually, I'll I'll let, I'll see if I agree with your review, Brian, when you get that going. No problem, we'll check back in in about next episode, I think. Alright, cool. And the last thing I've been playing is Hot Shots Golf, kicking Kyle's ass like <laughs> usual. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, what about you, Kyle, since I insulted you? What have you been playing? <laughs> well, uh, of course, I've been playing Hot Shots Golf with you. Um, I've been playing <laughs> Need for Speed and Most Wanted. <laughs> uh, stick It to the Man, Spider-Man, uh, Ridge Racer... Uh, Ease Memories of Celsetta, Killzone, Soul Sacrifice, and Little Big Planet. So I've had a busy week as far as gaming. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, playing a little bit of everything, uh, even some Borderlands 2 on PS3, so all over the place. Nice. <laughs> Definitely, though, uh, Golf and Little Big Planet were the highlights of the week. <laughs> yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> what yeah, about so you, Brian? That- yeah, on the, I was going to say on that topic, I jumped in with you guys, uh, the Lounge Play crew, for a couple of games of uh, Little Big Planet and Killzone, which is a blast, as it always is. And then um, other than that, I've, been, I've had a pretty uh, rough week personally, so I haven't got around to too much for myself, but uh, a few of us got around to some Borderlands 2 on PS3, which was fun. And then um, I've also got the time to uh, dig into Super Crate Box by Vlambeer which is really addictive, and I suggest everybody go out and grab it. It's a PS Mobile title. And also, uh, a while back, I picked up uh, PlayStation All-Stars uh, Battle Royale, uh, which I believe is really unappreciated, and I'm really late to the party on that one, but I'm loving it so far. And then I've also gotten really addicted to Spelunky, which I don't suggest you play <laughs> at nighttime because I have trouble falling asleep because there's always one more try. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that, that's what's been haunting me lately. Yeah, I haven't been playing too much, as I've said. Well, I've been very busy over the past couple of weeks. But I think I've been able to get a few hours on, well, minutes probably, of Rayman Legends in. And, well, I'm still immensely enjoying that game. It's great. Nice. Yeah, Rayman Legends is a fun game. All right. Well, Kyle got the... Play some Soul Sacrifice Delta, which is the Japanese demo. Uh, Kyle, did you want to talk a bit about about your experience in that? Sure. Um, yeah, so I, I switched to my Japanese account, or actually um, had to make a new one on the 12th uh, to dive into the Soul Sacrifice Delta demo. Uh, really, from coming from Soul Sacrifice, it, it's, it's a pretty big update in, in graphics. Uh, the game actually looks quite a bit better with all the new textures and stuff like that. Um, the character's not going so much of an upgrade as the scenery, uh, so it's a little bit more um, to prettify the game, I guess, um, than, you know, 
to get your character looking any better. Uh, the new offerings that you get, uh, some of them are pretty cool. Um, they didn't give you actually a lot to try or uh, the ability of upgrading them in the demo, so they've actually limited you quite a bit from the uh, first Soul Sacrifice demo, uh, which allows you to upgrade like all your offerings um, and had, I believe, twice as many levels to try. So it's it's a little bit smaller, but it, it was it was pretty good. Um, more of the same, really. Uh, they they just took uh, Soul Sacrifice and built onto it just a little bit, tweaking a couple things here and there to make it seem a little bit fresh. Um, they didn't do anything that was horrible to it. They didn't wreck anything. So overall, it, it's it's pretty much Soul Sacrifice with some really unique, cool tweaks. Yeah, would you say exactly. it's sequel worthy or from what you played? It's um, it's worthy of play. Like I really find with Soul, Soul Sacrifice, um, the the gameplay for me is in the different you know uh, settings with the different bosses that you have to fight. It, it's not so much about adding a whole bunch of new stuff and you know throwing a curveball at us. I guess so. I'm going to enjoy, I think, uh, the new title, even if I have to pay the full $40 for it, because I'll probably get 60 hours out of it. So uh, it'll be enjoyable for me, but some other people might think it's not worthy of the upgrade just for the graphics and a couple new bells and whistles, I guess. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know about that one yet. I still want to... I did enjoy the original Soul Sacrifice, so I'll keep my eye on this one, but I don't know if it will be worth upgrading. <laughs> to this one. We'll see. Um, so we've got maybe one or two new releases coming out, right, Brian? Yeah, just just one or two. Actually, <laughs> it's kind of an inside joke. Cause this <laughs> week we have a ton coming out. Um, so if you're not interested in releases, just brace yourself. It's going to be a little bit. Um, so, so I'm going to start off with North American releases. And starting today on December 17th, we have Flow, which is Cross by Furman's. Indoor Sports World, Runner 2, Future Legend of Rhythm Alien. Woo! Woo! I know I know <laughs> you're really interested in that, Jasper, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, that's already out on uh, other platforms, and I'm very glad it's coming to Vita. I'm definitely going to play. And it's also coming at a great price. Awesome! <laughs> 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 I was, I was somebody else would chime in there, but no dice. Um, <laughs> so moving on, we still have Sparkle, and then you know everybody on this panel knows that somebody here is excited about this one, Terraria. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> A little hee hee from Tyler. <laughs> yeah, and so that's it for North America this week, I believe. And then Europe today also has Euphoria. And Mutant Muds Deluxe, which is cross by. And tomorrow, Europe will be getting Runner 2, Future Legend of Rhythm Alien. And MotoGP Compact, Amen 1 Plus 2, and Backgammon Blitz. And possibly, if the rumors are to be believed, you might just be getting uh, a European release of Age of Zombies on PlayStation Vita. Um, also, there's a, there's a few demos I have to address this week as well. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z demo will be available on PS3 and PS Vita in North America. Sparkle demo will also be available, and Terraria as well. Um, there's also a lengthy list of sales, so just bear with me for a moment. I'm going to start off with the holiday sale. Uh, we have Guacamelee, which is on sale for uh, on PlayStation Plus for $3.75. Um, Underground, which is cross by, is on sale for $2.50. Limbo for PlayStation Vita is available for $3.75 with a PlayStation Plus membership. Lego Marvel Super Heroes PlayStation Vita version is available for $23.99. That's with a PlayStation Plus discount. And then also this week we have the the traditional PlayStation Plus discount apart from the holiday sale. We have Euphoria HD, which is available for $7.99. Terraria PlayStation Vita edition. Thirteen forty nine bit trip event yes. runner two seven ninety nine atomic ninjas two oh nine foosball twenty twelve two oh nine and the impossible game for a measly seventy four cents. Wow. Very big list there. Yeah. <laughs> Some good buys though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Guacamelee is great. If you don't have that, definitely pick it up. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nice. I can personally recommend Guacamole and Limbo. Very good choices. <laughs> yes. uh, I feel like a lot of us are going to go broke uh, this week. <laughs> At least I am. <laughs> oh, I don't have that problem. I'm already broke. <laughs> <laughs> you beat us All there, right, Jasper. Well. <laughs> yeah. I'll be with you there in a, f- in a few minutes when the store updates. <laughs> So if you hear me go silent during the podcast, I'm downloading Terraria. So just <laughs> <heads up. laughs> yeah. All right. So let's yeah. go ahead. What's up, Jasper? No, no. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I just All right. Like let's to head to the you. news. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Final Fantasy uh, X HD and X2 HD. All right, we've got some release date details for the PlayStation Vita. And it's going to release alongside the PlayStation 3 version in North America. And it has a release date of March 18th. So that's awesome because I'm really excited for that. Uh, it will support cross-save and retail for $39.99 in U.S. and Canada. The combo pack will also be available on the PlayStation Store. So you can grab that. But if you prefer the physical copy, you can get uh, Final Fantasy X at retail. And then you'll get a voucher for X2 because the games are pretty big. So <laughs> I'm going to go retail, because uh, having that digital of the other game is going to take up some memory. So definitely physical seems like the way to go, unless you have a 64 gig, which I don't, because I'm not in Japan, and I don't want to spend $120 to have it shipped to me. <laughs> uh, are you guys excited for uh, March 18th now? Yeah, I guess. I've, I've never played a Final Fantasy game, but 10 or X as you um, want to call it, whatever. Uh, seems to be a great start. Yeah, it's a good one. Anyone else? No one, no one cares about it? <laughs> uh, actually, I'm in the boat with uh, Jasper. I, I've never really like fully played a Final Fantasy game. I tried to get into a few, but I just didn't really work for me. I just kind of ended up shutting it off after like an hour. Which one did you play? Uh, I tried a couple. I tried uh, five... Seven, uh, I think the remake of Seven for PSP and another one. I just couldn't get into them. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, Kyle. I just it never gripped me in the way it seems to grip a lot of people. I, I played a couple of the early, early Final Fantasies. I think I'm talking one and two um, on the NES, and then I played Final Fantasy Seven on the PlayStation One, and just never caught me the same way it seemed to catch other people. And just, it's never really spoken to me. And the last one I tried was 13, and yeah, I left the sour taste in my mouth. Well, these party poopers here. <laughs> I'm excited for it, so. <laughs> I think 10 is a good place to start, though. If you guys ever get a chance to at least play it, I would I would go for it. Maybe, there's a, maybe they'll release a demo. Doubt it, but you could cross your fingers. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, they will release a demo, actually. I, yeah, do you I, think they will? No, I said I don't think they will release oh. demo. Yeah, yeah, I, I highly doubt they will. But if yeah, if they do, jump on it, give it a shot. <laughs> it was one of my more favorite uh, ones. Seven's my favorite, but ten is definitely up there. Hmm. All right, so up next, uh, Namco Bandai uh, recently teased a new Digimon title, and now Siliconera. Is that how you say that? I've never Siliconera. Siliconera. All right. Well, now I know. Silly they, uh, era. <laughs> <laughs> well, they released some more information about it. So Digimon Story is currently in development for our lovely handheld, and it's uh, slated to release in Japan over a year from now, which would be 2015. So you have to wait a while. So uh, It's a training RPG set in the near, near future, and yeah. Uh, are any of you guys interested in Digimon? Nope. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Pokemon killer, calling it. <laughs> so you, you're excited, Brian? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm super excited. It's going to be the Pokemon killer of 2015. You're going to see. Nintendo's <laughs> going to go bankrupt. Because of this one title. Absolutely. <laughs> Mark the date, okay? Yeah. Well, oh, I have a 2015 calendar. I'll, <laughs> I'll put it down. Well, you should. <laughs> you should get a Digimon calendar. Specifically. Oh, who doesn't have one? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I, not many of us seem to care about it, but I know <laughs> there is some <laughs> some heavy Digimon fans out there, so that's good news for you guys if you've been wanting that. 
Uh, if there's a demo, I'll try it out, but I'm not too much into Digimon, so not really much more to go from there. Um, up next, Little Big Planet DC Comics details. So this was the the pack that got teased a little while ago about some new stuff coming, and they kind of didn't mention the Vita at all, and they finally did. And it seems like we're getting, um, if I remember this right, we're getting the... The level pack in 2014. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> but we're getting the costumes, right? I believe today? they should be live already. But you can't okay. get those exclusive ones that came out with Little Big Planet 2. There's two bonus costumes. So, yeah, yeah that's all. All right. Well, I'm excited for this because I watched the little the trailer or whatever with this the cape or whatever that new uh, yeah new item you can place in the world. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> there's gonna be some cool levels. <laughs> and I think the thing the item that gets lost in the whole shuffle is the memorizer, which allows players to save their progress when they joined a created game, which I think is pretty incredible if you consider the the scope of the game. Well, you yeah. know that the Vita version already has that. Well, all right then. This would be new to Little Big Planet too, but the Vita version is the one that made this reality. See, the future is here, Brian. I don't, I don't create levels. I let Tyler create awful levels so I can play and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's that's rude. <laughs> I think I'm gonna make a level just well, for at you. At least he gets time. enjoyment out of your levels, Tyler. That's true. Well, it's the wrong type of enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you to judge? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> See this for me. Okay, Brian, I'm gonna make you a level that you're gonna love, and we're gonna laugh. Can we? Can giggle. we do a part of lounge play one day? Okay, robot, you need to relax. <laughs> say, say that again. <laughs> can we do a part of lounge play one day? We could. That could be one of our levels that we That's run not. through. If it's anything like the last little big planet playthrough we did, it's gonna be hilarious. I'm just going to make a level where we have to jump across something and it won't work, regardless of whatever we do. <laughs> uh, Tyler, now you spoil it already. Now I'll we change know. some things up. <sighs> I'm oh, sorry. Fun. Spoiler alert, a little late. <laughs> 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 Alright, let's, uh, let's move along before we keep derailing this. Uh, up next, uh, PlayStation Vita TV has a Taiwanese and Filipino launch. Um... Yeah, pretty much being released over there. <laughs> if you live there, that's good news for you. <laughs> We've been talking a lot about PlayStation Vita TV, so I guess it's, there's not too much to say that the, that it's coming to another region, which we kind of expected it to start spreading. So, so there's not yeah, not too much to go off there. Uh, also, regarding PlayStation Vita TV, uh, Sony is polling PlayStation Mobile developers about integrating their games in that and it's pretty interesting uh i don't don't really know if it would be system seller for the the vita tv but that's always good because there's some great playstation mobile games out there that you should definitely check out anyone else excited about (laughs) them pulling these guys yeah um it's not necessarily well let me start off by saying that PlayStation Mobile games have actually been surprisingly good. In my short time with them, I've been um, enthralled by how how good they are. Uh, the quality is ridiculous compared to the price, and it, I, right, yeah. So it's unexpected. But that being said, I, I I think it's a little bit more than just the possibility that uh, PlayStation Mobile will be hitting PS Vita TV, but also that these this Japanese company, Sony, is now pulling Western developers specifically about their integration, and it seems that developers the developers are at least encouraged, at least Mike Oliphant, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, uh, he seemed rather encouraged that this could spell the, uh, the uh, coming of PlayStation Vita TV to the Western markets, so that looks interesting. Nice. Yeah, it certainly that- does. This is kind of a little off topic of Vita TV, but it more PlayStation Mobile. I think what PlayStation Mobile needs, and it's it's kind of sad that it needs this, but I think it would actually be beneficial, and it would kind of make me want to play them more. Is trophy support? I uh, think if they get that, in, I know it's kind of it's kind of lame yeah. to say, shallow, but I there's a lot of people out there that don't play it because of yeah. it lacking trophies and. 
I do play it. I'm not saying that I ignore it just because there's no trophies, but I know I've seen people talk to me like, ah, I don't really care because what am I getting out of it? And it's like, oh, you know, you're playing a fun game. You don't really need trophies, but I think that would draw some more people in. So if they ever do that, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree there. I'm kind of in the same boat. I play them, but I would have more reason to play them or to go back if there was trophies because that's kind of yeah. my part of my replay value, I guess, in games is something to, you know, go for. If there's nothing left to do in the game, then I don't really play it anymore. Right. Yeah. It, I think they will eventually. At least I would hope they would do it eventually. But at at this moment, PlayStation Mobile needs something to give it a boost. Because I've heard from other sites that, that PlayStation Mobile developers are not really making any money off of what they're doing. Like, there's a select few that are making some money, but... Not a lot, so well, there, they need something to. Yeah, so there, go ahead. There is a like you can see it in the past few months. Uh, so many have definitely been pushing PlayStation Mobile. We're seeing a lot of attention being put there that was never ever paid to them before. So there's something brewing there. Um, I'm not quite sure, and I'm not going to speculate as to what. Um, but it, you can definitely feel that so many are focusing their attention a lot more on it. Yeah, I think. Um, well. I don't really give a shit about trophies, but if it attracts more customers and this, well, pulls more money into the PS Mobile market, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the PS Mobile, like the brand itself, is a bit unfortunate because um, it really gives off the impression of small games that, well, aren't really, don't have a lot of content. Like, people think, oh, well, it's mobile, so it's crap. So, uh, well, maybe it should be better integrated in well, PlayStation Vita and everything. And on the PS3 and PS3 uh, games and on PlayStation 4 in the PlayStation 4 section, I don't know. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that they could add to PlayStation Mobile that would help, but there's still some work to do, and they're they're starting in the right direction, that's for sure. True, sure, true. Sure. Yuki makes a good point. Uh, he says in the chat, or it shouldn't have been called PS Mobile, which is kind of true. They should have picked yeah. a different name. Yeah, it's kind of catch-22, though, because they were looking to bring in a mobile audience with their Xperia brand and so forth. Because at the time, you, gotta, you guys got to remember, now mobile gaming may not seem like such a threat, but if you recall a couple of years ago, there was a lot of rumors and murmurs about mobile gaming taking over the industry. And I think Sony was trying to... Um, create an ecosystem or at least uh, bleed their brands across multiple platforms so that way they could pull in multiple fans and uh, cr- increase their user base. But I think in the long run, it's been detrimental. So as a catch-22, sure, yeah, it's, it's obviously a bad form of branding. Uh, as to what they do with it moving forward, I have no clue. Yeah. So I think we forgot a release that's for Europe tomorrow. Which is unless you read it off and I totally didn't even listen because I don't care. Yeah, sure. <laughs> to listen to you, Brian. No, <laughs> no problem. Uh, was it? Did you mention Broken Sword? I didn't. You're right. Sorry, I got added in the last moment. I forgot. So, All right. Broken Sword is coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this is news. <laughs> yeah. So, Broken Sword is coming December 18th. Do you know what it's about? I assume it's about some broken sword, and uh, you're on here to <laughs> no, recover. No shit. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, to be honest with you, I'm I'm not too familiar. I know it's the fifth entry in the series, I believe. Is that what the five is? After I think so. Sword? I think. It's, <laughs> I only I only know Roman numerals. Okay. Uh, I could see how that could be confusing. Yeah. So if it said broken sword V, you'd understand what it's trying to say. Sure, that's five. <laughs> Don't be <laughs> silly. That it is. <laughs> All right. So to continue on with the news, uh, we got J Star's Victory VS demo date screens and box art, uh, and the demo is augmented reality. So keep that in mind that you're not actually playing the real game. So don't get too excited. Unless augmented reality is your thing, then be excited as much as you want. <laughs> um. Also, King Oddball is coming to the Vita this January. Uh, do we have a specific date, or is January just kind of what they're going for? I think we just have January at this point. All right, cool. No. And 
the release date for Yeez in Europe has been specified, and I have no idea what that is, because I already have the game. When is that, Jasper? You're in Europe. You want that, right? Uh, well, actually, I haven't checked out the release date, because I don't want to be depressed that I can't buy it on day one, because I don't have any money. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Now you just depressed him even more <laughs> by imagining it. Way to go, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, does anyone know the specified date? I'm going to put a guess out. Is it, is it January, right? February 21st. I from was retail locations, off. the digital copy hitting on the 25th. Nice. And also to continue with the news, Final Fantasy V is now playable on North American Vitas. That's a PlayStation 1 game, right? Yes. It's a classic. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So that's now playable. So if you liked Final Fantasy V, Brian, you know what that means. I do. It means that's v, five. It? five. There you go. <laughs> that's the one that comes after four. <laughs> but What's before four six, like? keep that in mind. Mm. Tricky. Mm. I'm not good with Newman New- <laughs> Newman oh, wow. Roman, <laughs> Roman numerals. Well, we can hear that. Hey. All right. Abstraction uh, is nearly finished with Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition for the Vita and PS3. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if I care too much about it, but it's pretty cool if you're into that. Yeah, that's good. I might give it a look. Are you guys excited for that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, as somebody who grew up in the early 90s, yeah, for sure. Um, Duke Nukem, especially those early 3D games, were iconic and um, were up there with the Dooms and the Wolfensteins of the world at the, at the time. Um, so, yeah, I'm dying to jump back in, and I hope I hope it, it lets me relive that, that nostalgic feeling better than Duke Nukem Forever did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try, I try. I have the game on PC, actually. Like, uh, I mean, Duke Nukem 3D, not Duke Nukem Forever. Um yeah, I don't like to buy turds. So I um, tried to play it on PC, but the controls were quite horrible, like from the old game, actually, not a remastered edition of sort of thing, which is this one. So I'm going to play it again on Vita, definitely, because, well, it's it's a good good old shooter, you know, and I like those kind of games. Yeah, and just just so you know, Jasper, I think the Megaton edition comes with the rem- remaster, it comes with the DLC, and it comes with the original game. So uh, mm. there's everything for you to choose from. Nice. Yeah, great. Uh, we talked a bit about Soul Sacrifice Delta, but I don't think we talked about the release date in Japan, did we, Kyle? No, we didn't talk about that. Do you know when it is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, oh, man, no. You're so organized. Only somebody <laughs> had a job of covering the news every week. Okay. Yeah. Remember, okay. Is so, it Brian? Uh, <laughs> I, like, <laughs> like I said, no. Was it you, Jasper? Oh, I actually think it was John, but he's ill. Oh, that's the. <laughs> I'm here, that's the yeah, I think All I'm right, just going to on. play the blame game and say Tyler sucks again. Ouch. Yeah, that must Jasper. hurt. It just does. We don't, like, say, we don't say it all the time. Eventually, it's just gonna beat me up so much that. I'm not going to be able to take it. I'm going to have to end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now really I got a little dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we bought Tyler some tissues and now we're back. Uh, Tyler, go ahead. <laughs> I still don't know when the release date is. <laughs> we do all that time and you need to find it. <laughs> He gave you like two seconds. <laughs> and it's damn some pop well, bad. Luckily for you, I have found it. It's March That's 6, 2014. All right, so let's pretend that never happened. So uh, the release date for that is now. <laughs> All right, so what was that, March 5th? 6th. 6th. That's VI. <laughs> yeah, VI <laughs> from <Brian>. Romans. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. If you're excited for that and live in Japan, or if you're wanting to import, there you go. March VI is when you'll be able to get it. <laughs> All right, where the heck am I? Oh, no, there I am. All right. Tyler, I have no idea where you are. <laughs> I have no clue. He lost himself there for a second and had to find himself somehow. 
Oh, okay. Anyways, uh, Kyle, you had some added stuff you wanted to talk about, PlayStation Vita TV and Taiwanese and stuff like that, that I skipped over. Do you know what that was? Um, what, what was actually missed is that uh, they had expanded the countries um, that the PlayStation Vita TV is coming out in in Asia. So uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia are all getting the PlayStation Vita TV as well on the 14th of January. And they've listed prices in the uh, post on the site. So if you're in any so of those check regions, that out. yeah, go check it out. Cool. And... Let's see if I get just made fun of after this, but I think that's all the news we got. You're fired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's the last news we have. <laughs> all I'm right. kidding. So <laughs> let's, let's head on over to some listener mail, Kyle. So here's our listener mail for the week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dedicated fan Jack here. I watched your upload of Tukidin. I was a... Um, Monster Hunter fan, but not anymore. However, Tukidin does not really hook me. Should I buy it? So, should you? Uh, huh. <laughs> well, I've only played the demo, so <laughs> I don't know if I can really suggest whether or not he buys it or not. It's it's very similar to Monster Hunter, Ragnarok Odyssey, Soul Sacrifice. I think it leans more towards Soul Sacrifice because it's darker, but there's no souls to be sacrificing. So... <laughs> I, I don't know. If you're not getting into Monster Hunter anymore, then maybe you're just drifting apart from it and you should try some something different. Uh, but I don't know what country you're in, but there should be a demo. If there was a Japanese demo, I don't see why they wouldn't release a demo for North America or Europe or wherever wherever it's, you're from. So just give it a shot if there's a demo and see if it's, up, it's what you want. I think it's from the UK. Ah. Well, then I have no idea. <laughs> Does it even have a release date? Tuki then? Yeah. yeah. I think so. So, you guys have played a lot more Cell Sacrifice than I have, considering I've played none. Um, <laughs> would that be something you would recommend to him if he's into Monster Hunter and perhaps considering Tuki then? Yeah. Kyle, have you played Tokiden yet? I have tried to play it, but I tried to play it in Japanese, and I really didn't get what the hell was going on. So, okay, so ah. you guys have, I, I presume you guys have had some familiarity, at least with the Monster Hunter franchise, at some level, at least viewing it. How would you, um, if he says that he's a, he was a Monster Hunter fan, could you see him enjoying Soul Sacrifice as a Monster Hunter fan? Yeah, I definitely could, because Soul Sacrifice sort of has, well, similar uh, it is a bit similar to Monster Hunter in that it has you battling all giant enemies in a sort of similar manner. I mean, it's, it's quite different, but you you kill big monsters, that's basically it. So, if it depends on why you do not like Monster Hunter anymore. So, if you don't like the boss, like the big monster battles in Monster Hunter anymore, then don't bother with Soul Sacrifice. But if you just don't like all the hunting and gathering, then you could try Soul Sacrifice or Token in the world. Ever. Yeah, I, I agree with Jasper. That's like right on with what the differences are between Monster Hunter and Soul Sacrifice. So, yeah. Kyle? Yeah, I also agree with Jasper, other than the fact that it looks like from uh, gameplay and stuff I've watched of Token, it might be a little bit more... Um, like Monster Hunter than Soul Sacrifice is, so maybe he should go for Soul Sacrifice over Tukidin if he's interested in uh, getting away from those, you know, hunting around and finding stuff fast facts. Or he should just ignore all of those games and go for Freedom Wars. Yeah, that's that's a good idea too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. don't ignore those because Tokiden looks pretty cool, but Freedom Wars looks so much better. I would definitely just take just your advice that. if it was out already and playable. <laughs> so if you don't know what Freedom Wars is, go check a YouTube video out, because that game looks awesome. Or check one of our posts out, because we probably have a post about it somewhere. Somewhere down there in the news. <laughs> Alright, so I believe that's all we got for our listener mail. Thanks. That was Jack, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jack, for your your message. Uh, Kyle, you have a game that you would like to talk to us about. 
What would that be? Did I? What, what's going on? Are you giggling? <laughs> what? I don't what's know what going you're on? Talking about. I swear I heard someone giggle. Maybe not. All right. And Tyler's <laughs> gone insane. So yeah, uh, I was thinking the exact that in the next <laughs> podcast. <laughs> No, you don't want to talk about your game? I didn't hear you say anything about my game. Yeah, I, I think you blanked out there. We didn't hear anything. <laughs> oh. No problem. Uh, then I, must have, I, I understand why you guys think I was weird. <laughs> I was saying you have a game that you would like to talk to us about. Ah, what yes. would that game be? The game of the week, actually. <laughs> <laughs> game of the week! All right, yeah. sorry. So, um, based on the sales a little bit, uh, tip me on what I was going to pick for my game of the week. So, Game of the Week this week is Guacamole. Um, If you don't know what Guacamole is, it's apparently a Metroidvania platformer. Um, I don't know what a Metroidvania is because I've neither played Metroid nor Castlevania. Um, (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah, so... uh, Metroidvania, yeah. Basically, is that you have... uh, You you have sort of a map, uh, and you can... um, You don't go... From point A to point B, but you have sort of uh, sides. It's a sort of side scroller uh, platformer uh, in combination with uh, puzzle and exploration. And um, as you go along the game, you unlock new power ups, and uh, with those new power ups, you can go back and collect other items or power ups along the way. That's basically sort of what a Metroid thing is. So it's. To, okay, to the exactly. expl- exploration. <laughs> and or, or often has combat or, you know, platforming. <laughs> so go ahead, Kyle. Okay, well, that that, that uh, describes Guacamelee pretty perfectly. Um, it, it's It's got uh, all those things, actually, and pretty good combat. Uh, it's got quite a few uh, upgrade skills that are actually used for both combat and um, getting to extra areas around the game. Um, there's some DLC for it, so if you finish the game, there's some extra stuff to do. Uh, but being that it's about, I think it's, seven hours or so for a single playthrough and probably around 16 to clean up everything and do hard mode. Um, it, it's quite a big game and it's on sale right now for three forty nine, I believe. Absolutely. So that's my it. game of the week. I would uh, nice. agree with Kyle there. It's, it's an amazingly fun game. I think it's one of the better platformers released in the past few years, especially for its price because well, most platformers aren't all that long. And uh, I, just, I think it's really fun. The combat is really well, ex- executed really well. And that's a big plus for the game. And it's humorous. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's our game of the week. Hey, I, I have before... something to say, Tyler. Stop <sighs> cutting me off. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just comes out here and bullies me out. Say something, bro. Don't cry, say it. All right. So, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with Kyle. It, it, Guacamelee is an amazing game. Um, if you're a fan of games, there's so many self-referential, self-referential, self-referential. Um, Sign it up. I don't it's not even Japanese. No, I know. <laughs> terrible. Self-referential um, jokes in there. Um, there's memes and all sorts of other uh, video game jokes. Uh, but aside from that, it's just oozing um, charm it's, it's it's remarkably beautiful it controls really well and kyle couldn't have made a better choice and on top of that it's developed here in toronto so but heads up to my hat off to Drinkbox studios nice so before we end this i want to jump back to jack's email about tokiden and uh on the esrb website they have rated it so i'm going to read off what they think Tokiden is all about. So, the game is rated T for teen. The content has alcohol references, blood and gore, mild suggestive themes, and violence. Other includes online features that may expose players to unrated user-generated content. Alright, so this is the summary of the game. This is an action game in which players assume the role of an elite fighting force that battles demons in feudal Japan. From a third-person perspective, 
Players engage in quests and use daggers, swords, spears, and bows to defeat demons and larger boss creatures in frenetic combat. Battles are accompanied by sword slashes, cries of pain, and colorful light effects. Blood splatter effects occur when demons are hit. Some boss battles depict dismem- Oh. <coughs> totally choked on my words. Uh, <laughs> depict dismemberment or monster tentacles and appendages. A handful of female characters are depicted in outfits that expose large amounts of cleavage. The game also contains several alcohol references in the dialogue. For example, Ibuki, you smell of alcohol, are you drunk? Drunken fit of rage, and yep, I am drunk, very, very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> So that sounded like an like amazing I'm, conversation. That just those three <laughs> sentences. <laughs> that was that was wonderful. So yeah, that's what the E R E R E S R B says about Tokiden: The Age of Demons. So I'd just so. like to uh, interject there that other than the fact that it's um, you know fu- set in feudal Japan and you're battling demons, that description sounded like Grand Theft Auto. Did it not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It did have that twist on An it. An action game yeah. in which you kill people, and it's like your job. You get quests, and you get, like, weapons to kill those people with. And, like, <laughs> just the way that it was, like, put out by the ESRB, it sounded like a Grand Theft Auto game. Yeah. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, Feudal Japan, you know. There we go. Like that. that actually doesn't sound too bad. It sounds like the new Yakuza game is coming out. There you <laughs> go. Nobody follows the Yakuza series. Oh, nah. yes, I do. It's, it's cool. I've never played it, but I have watched videos of it, and yeah. maybe I'll play it in the future. All right, well, I th- that's all we got for this week of the Vita Cast. Uh, you can obviously find all of our stories and reviews on the Vita Lounge dot net. Uh, our forum is still on the fritz right now, so hopefully we get that resolved pretty soon. Uh, you can also find us all on Twitter. Uh, I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. Brian is at Brian G. Sharon. Uh, Jasper is at JASBZ. And Yuki is at Yuki underscore WR. Also, we'd like, like to welcome a new member to the team, and that is Brad. And you can find him on Twitter as well, TVL Brad. So go oh, give him yeah. a follow brad is the bug him. <laughs> welcome he brad. He, he's really into my music i found out so <laughs> i think i'm gonna make him a cd <laughs> uh also you can find the the vita lounge on facebook just search the vita lounge and lounge play we've talked about this for a bit and we want some people to join we've been having a lot of fun playing kill zone little big planet soul sacrifice recently and we got another week ahead of us to figure out some more games to play. So Kyle and I will be diving into that very soon. So look for our videos going up on the Vita Lounge YouTube page channel of our plays. And Little Big Planet was a lot of fun. There's some a lot of fails in that video if you <laughs> want to watch that. <laughs> it got a little ridiculous towards the end. So think that's all we got this week so have a great week thanks for listening yeah yeah